I love that not sure you keep saying the word empowering. Um, that's something that I talk about a lot too, because it is very empowering when you have educated yourself and you have additional knowledge outside of the, you know, outside of the box that we <laughs> traditionally live in and how, how much better you feel, how much more confident you are walking into your vet's office even um, when you have done your research and you're educated and you know what you want out of your vet visit <laughs> and what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. And the, the courage and the bravery to say, thank you for that information. I appreciate it. I'm going to take it with me, think about it and make a decision, right? Like, because the fact is, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. I know you yep. offer online services, which is amazing. Um, and people need to know about them. Um, but the fact is that there are not enough holistic veterinarians right now for the people out there that want them. Um, so figuring out ways to um, create a team of people to help you raise your pet the way that you want to raise your pet <laughs> is so important. So being able to have those conversations with your veterinarian and be yeah. empowered um, in those conversations you're having as, you know, your veterinarian is part of that team. And that's, that's how it should be. You should be working together <laughs> to make sure your pet is um, living their healthiest, happiest life. But um, on that topic of empowerment, I find that people tend to take information better, like they retain it a little bit better if they can find a nugget in there that they they can pull from their life and say, oh my gosh, that's me. So I was hoping you could possibly give me one mm. or two examples of some patients and obviously no private information, but of cases where you have helped animals <laughs> since you have added into your tool toolbox your holistic approaches, whereas under the conventional medical treatment that uh, you were taught in veterinary school, you may not have been able to help them in the way that you are now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the first patient that comes to mind where we saw such a dramatic improvement, um, his, his name's Roper and he, he's, he's wonderful. Uh, he, but however, he was having, a, he's an Australian uh, cattle dog and he, he was, he was hype. Well, actually, he, he wasn't hypothyroid yet because it hadn't been diagnosed, but he was having a lot of back pain. And so they brought me in, they actually brought me in for their other dog that had a bladder tumor that was misdiagnosed and it kept being treated as a urinary tract infection. And so we came in and got the right testing and actually diagnosed the bladder cancer. Unfortunately, it was pretty advanced. However, their other dog was going through all this back pain he was kind of grumpy. He was reactive. His coat didn't look good. And he was going every single week to the chiropractor for an adjustment for like the past year, every week. And it wasn't holding the adjustment. And so we went through, so what we do is we look at all the records. We look at like previous blood work. We do a physical examination, just like we would if, you know, if I was seeing him in a conventional setting, I do house consultations in this mm -hmm. area. So I get to see the environment too, which is really helpful. Um, so it gives me an idea of, you know, other factors like environment talks. They live in the countryside. There's lots of farming, lots of spray. Um, so pesticides, things like that. So it gives me a bigger picture, but we ended up testing for thyroid disease, he came back really, really low. He was hypothyroid and he's six years old. And I don't know if he's had that his entire life. And so we were able to help that. We did some microbiome testing and he had severe dysbiosis present. We also did a hair tissue mineral analysis test and he was really high in aluminum. He was also higher in mercury too. And then he had some arsenic and cadmium and lead. Every single pet we test mm -hmm. come back positive for heavy metals, but it's the levels. He was at, I believe, 40 mm -hmm. for aluminum. We want zero. So he's he's pretty high. So we needed to support his detox pathways and also adjust his diet and his digestion and all of that. Now, 
He's getting acupuncture sessions every two to three weeks. His back's not painful. He's a different dog. His digestion has improved. His coat is beautiful. And when he goes for like the chiropractor, his treatments stay. So he doesn't have to go as frequently. And so he's a different dog now. And that's because we didn't forget about the conventional side. We just did a more comprehensive thyroid panel and actually tested for it. And then we ruled out some of the other factors that were impairing the healing of his body from occurring. He was already on a raw food diet, but because of the heavy metals, because he had this dysbiosis, the bad bacteria is outnumbering the good in his, in his gut, he wasn't absorbing or digesting the food. And so by tweaking and adjusting all of those areas, now his body's working much better. It's a longer process. That's the downside with holistic. However, he's doing really, really well now. We've been working together uh, probably, we're probably going on almost a year now. So he's doing great. So that was a really good example of like, okay, something's off, you know, just giving, he was on carprofen, he was on Rimadil constantly for his pain and it wasn't helping him much. And so this is where for pet parents listening, like if they have a dog or a cat and there's a chronic health issue and you're giving a drug and you're not seeing the improvements that you want, 100% try to find a holistic vet or an integrative vet that you can partner with, or just continue to learn and then ask those tests to be run or find people that can run those tests um, and give you a better idea of what's going on. Um, one of the, the cats, I don't know who's over here, uh, we adopted him right after our Finn, our German Shepherd passed, and he's a great example of what happens, like he was a rescue, he he was about 10 weeks old when we adopted him. <clears throat> he came to us. He had diarrhea. He had been on multiple rounds of antibiotics for upper respiratory infections. He was being fed a prescription diet as a kitten. Um, he was neutered, you know, as soon as they could. And this is a common scenario for a lot of, especially like cats. You know, we have upper respiratory illness, we have diarrhea, potentially, we have a lot of stress problems, got health issues. And, you know, they, when we got him, they said, he's going to be on a prescription diet for the rest of his life. And I was like, no, he's not. Day one, I took him off of it. <laughs> I was like, no. And we used whole food supplements. We used digestive support to help him. We made sure he was in a calm environment that we provided environmental enrichment for him. And, you know, he, he was one that we had a separate room for him and he lived under the bed for a week. Like I couldn't touch him. I would just like lay there and try to like, you know, just read and like get him used to feed him in there and get him used to us. And then he decided one day, seven days after we got him, it was safe. And his, his gut health is good. Now we've tested it. We've looked for heavy metals for him and he's doing so much better. Now he's a completely normal cat. That's on a raw food diet. And so this is where, like, you know, if I had just listened and said, oh, yeah, prescription diet for one, that's super expensive. And two, it's a dry prescription diet for a cat. It's not the most species appropriate diet for him long term and could potentially lead to health issues down the road. So, you know, he's just a good personal example of like being able to look at him as a whole and see where the imbalances are and what can we improve. And we adjust based on his his responses to what we're doing. And this is where pet parents listening can apply these yeah, same it's, principles. Yeah, it's really to incredible that, like cats. you were talking about earlier, just the tiniest things that you can do to start out with and see some really, really huge improvements. We interviewed a new pet sitter, and it was really difficult because where we, we lived in San Diego for eight years, and I had the same pet sitter for eight years, and it was incredible, and she was wonderful, and she was like, you know, extended family. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we moved a, a year ago now, and I am on my, this will be my fourth pet sitter that we've tried out. And I'm just like, I'm struggling so much with this. And I'm like, why is this happening? But anyway, she is a really awesome lady. And I really hope that this, that it's going to work out. And she was telling me about, um, one of her dogs and it broke my heart because it's a, a bulldog. And she was showing me pictures and said that he is just like, she feels like he doesn't want to live anymore. His skin is so bad. Like she, she's, she's tried all the things and yeah. he's been on Apoquel for years. And I'm just like, 
Okay. Well, I'm, you know, trying to, to, to I mm. gave her a few different yeah. holistic veterinarians to look up and I, and I, I told her, you know, try the animal biome testing. And, um, I gave her some raw food and some raw goat's milk that I had in the freezer. And she called me two days later and she said, he got out of bed and walked outside to poop on his own for the first time in years. And I wanted to cry. <laughs> and I'm like, I haven't even done anything, but gave her a little bit of food and, and raw goat's milk. <laughs> and she was just like, yeah, she's like, he, um, it's amazing. Though, right? like, she said, I, I had to pick him up to go outside to potty. And he walked outside on his own for the first time to poop in years. And I'm like, like I, I'm wanting to cry just talking about it because it's these tiny little things that can make such a huge difference um, in their lives. And um, she's going to do the, yeah. the uh, gut biome testing and, and all the things. And I'm like, please do. <laughs> please keep going. Um, especially when I hear somebody say that they think their yes. pet doesn't want to live anymore. You know, like that's yeah. horrible. Um, but it's the reality for a lot of people right now because of skin issues and Oh, oh, it just makes me so sad. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I just talked to a client with her cat and chronic pancreatitis, and the cat's picky. She doesn't know what to do. She she's going into the vet every three months for more testing, and his pancreatitis test tests positive every time she goes in, and she's told that's normal. Like, oh, he's not showing symptoms. You don't have to worry. And I'm like, well, being picky is a symptom and he's not losing weight. And, you know, here's the problem. If we, this is like a hard place. So many pet parents are in and she's, she's doing the right thing. She's mm -hmm. reaching out. She's, you know, she knows there's something better, which is great. And that's where being the advocate for your pet and just pushing through, it can be hard. I totally get it. Like I spent years trying to figure out stuff for my husband and, the thing is, though, is that when she figures out like reducing the inflammation and figuring out how to get that cat onto the right diet, that's the game changer. Because if we don't address it and we just say, yeah, I always hear this is normal. But what they mean is this is common, you know, just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal. Normal is there's no pancreatitis. And what can happen is, is if those imbalances continue, that's when we see things like diabetes, we see chronic health conditions, we see autoimmune disease, we see cancer. And that's, this is where it's really important to keep like pushing through and keep advocating and like listening to podcasts like yours, where you're educating and sharing a wealth of knowledge and support for people because they feel alone in this journey and don't know where to turn. And there's, there are a lot of different options out there. Um, it's just, it can be hard navigating that space, especially if you're, that's very you're just true. beginning. It can, it can feel very, very lonely for people, which is why, you know, I, I, I want to keep, keep putting stuff out there and let people know that there, there are other people like you <laughs> in the world that realize that there have to be better ways. Um, 